Hello, I'm James Mayer, and today I'm with Jean Ribeiro at Quinta de Valado for a new I Love Dora interview in partnership with Great Discoveries. Jean Ribeiro, good afternoon. Hello, James. Thank Hello. you very much for your visit. visit. You're welcome to Quinta de Valado. It's Thank you pleasure. so much. It's a pleasure to be, to be with you this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, Jean, you, you are the CEO of Quinta de Valado. And you're equally a descendant of one of the Doro's most famous figures, Dona Anton Antonia Adelaide Ferreira, who was a great 19th century businesswoman and wine producer and innovator. Um, in your opinion, are family structures a particularly relevant mo business model for, for wine production? I think so, uh, although... Uh they don't necessarily apply to all uh, regions of the world and to all segments of wine production. I think in our case and in the case of uh, producers who make uh, very good and uh, expensive wines and uh, wines that uh, uh, have implied a lot of, uh, of experience to produce and, and, and many generations, I think it's very important and in our case uh, being descendant and, and having a property that belonged to Don Antonia is definitely has definitely helped us a lot in the in the in our project. Yes, I, I suppose a lot of the knowledge you work with is is like empirical knowledge that is transmitted from generation to generation. Yeah, although as you know, we have nowadays two distinct um, uh, areas in terms of wine production. We have the port wines which were produced, produced uh, in the Douro Valley and at Quinta de Valado since many generations. Yes. And for those, uh, the knowledge of many generations, both in the production, but also in the aging and, uh, and in the making of the, of the different uh, blends is very important. Sure. But uh, as you know, we also, do, we also produce dry wines, n not since a very long time, but since uh, uh, my generation, yes, I would say, the middle of a, my generation. A bit of a, ge a revolution in the Dora yes, in yes. the last 20 or 30 years. Yeah. Would, would you like to talk a little bit about how winemaking has evolved in your working career? Of course. So, uh, until, uh, as I said, until uh, 20 years ago or so, uh, the Dora region was producing only port wine. But uh, at that time, a few producers, uh, which were later called the Doro Boys, uh, had the conviction that there were conditions and potential for making very good dry wines in the Doro Valley. So we decided to go in that direction and uh, on top of that we decided, uh, and that was the Doro Boys project, to promote, uh, to start with, to share the experience of the production and also to promote these dry wines together as it was something new in the market. Mm. So. Uh, this was a new, a new um, reality in our in our place, and uh, of course, uh, we started to use uh, the same grape varieties as we used to in the in the in the port wine. But soon we found out that uh, we had to search for different, not different, but for to bet on some of the grape varieties, and to to search for. Uh, before we were, for port wine, we were uh, planting on the south-facing, low-altitude okay. vineyards and with high produ pr production. Mm -hmm. And we found out that for the dry one, it was not the same thing. So we started to use a different, or only some of the varieties, and the north-facing vineyards and higher altitude. So it was a... a, a, a a shift in some of the habits that we had. Yes, yes. It's, it's very interesting to see the cohabitation of these two types of wine in the same region. Yeah. Port wine, which of course, as you said, is a, is a historic wine that's been produced for centuries and now the new table wines or, or, or still wines. Um, would you say port wine is a wine of yesterday or is it a wine of today or the future? How would you place no, it? I wouldn't say it was the wine of yesterday. I would say that uh, uh, at this moment, um, uh, it's not uh, 
so easy to find uh, new consumers for fortified uh, wines, for sweet wines and, and uh, high uh, wines with high levels of alcohol. But the market is still there, so mm -hmm. the market has been uh, more or less stable, uh, growing a little bit last year. So the market is there mainly, and uh, we are. I, I'm. Um, I believe that the consumers for the very high quality ports will stay there because it's really a very very pleasant wine to drink. Right. Um, so more of a collector's wine, or for uh, people who yes, I would say so, and uh, and for people who have time and space and money to keep the wines, uh, these port wines, in good cellars, yes, and yes. open them in special occasions. Yes, and for instance, I I, I, I will mention uh, England, in the traditional houses in England, uh, they still have. They all have port wines in their cellars, and they open them for special occasions, for yes, special lunches. Yes, yes. When mm -hmm. they have guests, when they have parties, yes. they always open a good bottle yes, of port yes, wine. Yes. So, I wouldn't say port wine is only from the past. For us, it's still a, a, an important um, yes, yes. Uh, product, and uh, we are uh, investing in making better and better uh, old Tony and vintage ports. Right, right. And if you go to America, for instance, and you say, um, I'm Zhao from Quinta de Valado, is it a, a help for you in selling your, your still wines, your, your Doro Doc, to say, okay, we are the region that also produces um, port wine? Yeah, I think it's um, a door that can be opened easier than. Than, than if we did not have the, the port wines. Right. Uh, although the problem with uh, with selling the, the dry wines is that although when people taste the wines they 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 agree that they have a very high quality. Uh, although we have very high scores from. Uh, Robert guys Parker. like Parker yes. and Wine Spectator, uh, very often the buyer says, okay, your wine is fantastic, I love it. But the consumers at my wine shop or at my restaurant, they, don't, they will not uh, buy it because they don't know it and they don't want to risk. It is a, if it is an expensive wine from the Doro Valley, it's uh, difficult that they risk paying a high price for a wine that they don't know that uh, doesn't have still a very uh, a prestige. So it's a barrier that yes. it's difficult it, to... It's strange this um, gap that exists yeah. between, as you said, the attention the Portuguese mm -hmm. wines are getting through top, yeah. top journalists. Robert Parker, etc., competitions, and the perception of the guy or the woman who goes into their, their supermarket and says, okay, a wine, 50 euros, woo, I better go to France instead, or, you know. But you know, James, it takes South time. Africa, sure. Uh, we would like that things uh, could happen faster, but it took also time for the French and the Spanish and the Italian and the, so it's not from one moment to the other. Of, of, in, of, in that segment. Yes, of course. If you go to the supermarkets, one day if you have there a Portuguese wine with a very good price, with a very exciting label, yes. and we make a, some sort of promotion or a campaign, right. it can go like right, that. Right, right, right. Yes. So do, do you have an idea, one idea, how this could evolve and, and it might be possible to sell it's, wines uh, at a It's more evolving price. Uh, slowly, but uh, on the other hand, we don't have very big volumes of those very good wines yes. so if from one day to the other the demand was going like this we would be sold out quickly sure so i think it's going steadily and um and uh a very important uh, uh variable is also the price so we need to increase the price of our wines and get closer to the price of the very good wines from indeed uh, yes 
Italy or France or Spain. Yeah. And but we are going on that direction, and um, of course now we had this uh, interval, which uh, made things much more complicated. Let's see how things are going to yes, come yes. back. But we were going on the it, right direction. It, it's June 2020, and you're you're referring, of course, to yes. the COVID. Yes pandemic yes yes, yes. yes. How, how's your work been affected by that uh, work both work in the in the vineyard wine yes. production mm -hmm. exports so we have uh, five different teams so we have the people who are working in the vineyards and those didn't stop and and they could not stop because we need to prepare for the harvest sure sure and they are on the open air and not so close to each other, so yes. it's not so problematic. Then we have the people at the winery, working with uh, the barriques and with uh, containers where we have the wine and making the blends and moving the wine from one place to the other. And those we had during some weeks, uh, we divided the team in 50-50 okay. and they were working alternatively. Right. But now they are all working again. They're all working together again. Yes. Okay. Then we have our tourism team mm. and those all went home because we closed the hotels yes, yes. and the uh, restaurant and the wine shop and yes. everything. But now you, they are all back. You, you, you told me you've reopened yeah, your two hotels reopened and, and the uh, restaurants. That's fantastic yeah. news. Uh, and, uh, and we've and been uh, fully booked wow. in the last that's that's wonderful that's two weekends wonderful. and also yes, during the yes, week yes yes and we are um, getting many new bookings which is very good so we are that's recovering that's, that's very exciting yeah. it's very exciting um, then we have the team at the office and we also sent uh, like a 70 percent home some of them working from home some of them with layoff but now they are all back again good good well, it sounds so as if are, things are practically things, back back to normal, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. And 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 what about um, export sales? I know that exports account in a normal year for about fifty percent of your a bit less than that, uh, a, a bit less, a little less. Okay. But uh, so we sell both in Portugal and uh, abroad to two different uh, segments: to the off trade supermarkets sure. and to the on trade yep. restaurants. Export is mainly on trade, so mainly uh, restaurants. So it uh, was uh, very strongly reduced. The yes, sales. yes. We kept selling uh, a little bit to countries where we sell to supermarkets. And in Portugal, it was the same. To restaurants, zero during right. these three months. Right. But we increased our sales to the off trade. Oh, did you? Yes. By 30%. So okay. it didn't compensate yes, for yes, yes. But anyway, uh, we have um, we have revised our budget for this year uh, with a, with a, um, an objective of uh, doing sixty percent of what we've done last year. Okay, yeah, and that is more or less um, breaking even. Right, right. But now I, I do not know. So quite, quite, a, quite a tricky year in quite some a ways. Tricky and, year, yes. and during the, con the lockdown period, have you been able to um, sell more online? Has there been a lot of the people I'm talking to have said, you know, we've had we've had demand online or we've set up online programs. We had uh, we didn't want to. We have a, an online shop. Yes. But we didn't want to promote it too much because we didn't want to make a lot of uh, competition to our traditional partners. That, that can be complicated, yes. Yeah, that yes, can yes. be. But also, we thought that uh, the basis is so small right. of what we sell online Okay. that we would need to increase uh, many times to be uh, to compensate yes. uh, for, for, for what we are losing yes, in the yes, other yes. channels. So we sort of let it go and uh, we increased maybe 300 percent but uh, on a very small right right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last time we spoke you told me that you just received some good news uh, the, the prestigious french business school INSEAD yeah. has created uh, a case study right. um, modeled on Quinta de Valado yeah. 
um, lucky students. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why, why do you think this is? Uh, it was a surprise to, yeah. be, to be... Really? Yeah. It was a surprise to me, a, a big surprise. And it just happened. It was mm -hmm. uh, on the beginning of this month. And I was supposed to go there for the, for the lecture. Ah, yes. But it was on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> How disappointing, yeah. Uh, With 160 students around the world, because most good. of them also went away from France. Right, right, right. Uh, but it, it, it was very, for us, very a big honor. Yes. And I think that uh, it had, the, the reason why they chose Quinta do Valado and Portugal, I think it's because Portugal was uh, uh, everywhere around the world was being uh, spoken and mentioned it and everybody was uh, had uh, the intention to come to Portugal so it was on the news Portugal yes and also the wine and also the fact that it was uh, we had a we really had a, a good a good uh, growth and uh, and uh, increase in uh, in visibility and uh, different new products so great great Yes, they thought yes. it was an interesting case to present yes, yes, to the yes, students. Yes. And wine is wine. Of course. All the time. Everybody <laughs> likes to, <laughs> to yes, yes. speak I, I and I, discuss and yes. learn about wine. I wonder if in the years to come that will persuade any of those students to buy vines or, or, or enter the wine trade. Interesting to... I, I have no doubt about that. Yes. You know, all those students, they have very... Uh, the, pros the perspective they have or the, the, the probability they have to get very interesting jobs is very high. Yes, yes. All of them. Fantastic. It's on the uh, record. Uh, sure, sure. So, Fantastic no school. doubt some of them, uh, hmm. some of them will, will uh, one day want their own vineyard. <laughs> yes, yes. Because it's part of the right, right, right. Of the but, uh, history. You're but uh, one interesting question they've yes. put to the students yes. was how many of them had heard about uh, Valado before? Ah. It was 11%, oh. which is pretty interesting, although they had uh, something like 30 Brazilian students. Okay. So the probability <laughs> for a Brazilian student... Yes, yes, yes. To, uh, well, to it, have... Interesting to take the temp temperatura in five years' time and see. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But we were talking about uh, tourism. It's, it's interesting to consider how uh, Portugal has sedgewayed very successfully from 2019, when tourism in Portugal was perceived as something very, very strong and, and pretty well um, top end of the market. And wine tourism, of course, was an important part of that, to the, the COVID situation, where now uh, internationally, Portugal is seen as, as a safe place mm -hmm. and a country that's responded in a very responsible way to, to the COVID pandemic. And that, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. And so uh, anyway, I think it's, uh, this makes us think about the unpredictability of uh, the world. Yes. We discussed many times what could happen, what could damage Portuguese tourism. Yes, we we yes. spoke about the airports w which were full sure. and no more capacity. Sure. We spoke about eventual terrorist attacks. We spoke about uh, the service of the restaurants of no, no, and hotels not being as good as but we never no. imagined. No, I don't, like I don't think anybody imagined. So. Yes, yes. And other things can um, happen that we are not imagining. Right. To tourism right, or to the wine right, or to the... Right. So it makes you be more realistic. Yes. Yes, indeed. And I think in the end it was good for Portugal comparing to other countries because uh, apparently we, we behaved well. Yes. Uh, and yes. At, at yes. least up to yes. now. Yes. And uh, our neighbors in the south of Europe which is a very strong destination this yes. uh, south of Europe because yes. of the climate, yes. because sure. of, sure. of uh, history yes. and uh, art and all that. Yep. They didn't behave so well. No. So nowadays, I think there's a stronger uh, will to come to Portugal than to Spain or Italy. Or let's, let's hope so. Yeah. I think for me, one of the really good reasons to 
get onto a plane and come to Portugal in the next few months is the, the, the white wines of the Douro. Now, 20 or 30 years ago, of course, the Douro was not associated with white wine. It was Vino de Porto and it was uh, red wine. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the development of, of white wine? I, I know you have fabulous white wines at Quinta de Valado. Thank you. Uh, so, the, the I can say that uh, the white wine was... Uh, we had more doubts about <laughs> the potential of the Douro for for uh, white wines than for the red. Red yeah. for us was almost, uh, I would say, the risk was very, very small yes, of yes. not doing interesting wines. Right. With the whites, it was not, uh, we were not so confident. But to start with, I think one of the interesting things about our white wines from the Douro is that we use, of course, they are very good, uh, we managed to do very good wines, and I would say top-class world white wines, uh, and using different varieties. Varieties that no one tried or tasted before. Because we are not doing Chardonnays or Sauvignon Blancs or other few very well-known that everybody is using. Sure. So it's a, it's a, a, a challenge, and it's uh, very interesting for consumers around the world to try something completely different and very good. Yes. And then we, of course, we started to produce dry wines with the same white varieties that we used for port wines, but they were not so interesting because they lacked freshness and acidity. Right, right. Uh, and we started new uh, or different varieties that existed in the Douro, but they were not so used. And they were not so used because they were not so interesting for port wine. They didn't have enough sugar or enough yields, so uh, people only planted them in very small yeah. quantities. But we found out that we could do very good wines with those. And we also started different uh, techniques, like uh, north-facing vineyards, higher altitude yes, vineyards. Yes. And uh, the, ver the very exciting thing about the Douro uh, vineyards is that in, in the same property, uh, in, at Valada, for instance, we have very different terroirs within the same property. Yes. So we can do different uh, red dry wines That's incredible. in the same property yeah. Yeah. and very different from, from each other yes. because of the place where they are and also because of the variety we right. use. And the same happens with the uh, white wines. Yes, yes. So it's really exciting to, to be able to show uh, w very good uh, dry white wines from um, a very hot uh, yes, yes, yes. area. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I, I recently spoke to two of your colleagues about Riesling. Yes. Uh, one of one of the, these these uh, winemakers was Dirk Nieport, yes. who of course makes Riesling in in, yeah. in the the Douro. The other was Miguel Roquette of, of Quinta de Crasto, and he said, "I love uh, Riesling. I loved drinking Riesling." And when I said, "Well, would you would you make a Riesling here in the Douro?" He said, "No, no, no, no. What would you make a Riesling?" Now, now I was started to be very surprised because you mentioned Riesling and Miguel Roquette and I thought are they starting to produce Riesling? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no but not, it was for the, for the, the <laughs> no, opposite. No, no. Yes. No, not really. No. No. Although I think Riesling makes fantastic wines. Yes. But uh, I would say let Riesling for the Swiss and the German <laughs> yes. and the Austrians. All right, all right. Yeah. And let us try to do our own Riesling as good as we can with the uh, with uh, Arintos or L L Rabigatos with or your fabulous local Gouveios, yes, yes, Portuguese varieties, yes. yes. Because I think that and is what we can. Mm. That's the opportunity we can. We can. Uh, yes, uh, we yes. can we, we take advantage of. Of course, I think it's very interesting for Dirk to make a reasoning because he's a. Uh, is always thinking about <laughs> and different things. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, his concern is not so much about. Uh, Selling that Riesling mm. is more about uh, finding out what he can do with sure, the Riesling the sure. door and make 100 uh, bottles. Maybe we could turn the question the other way around and say, what about exporting Portuguese grape varieties? We know, of course, that Turiga Nacional, for instance, has been mm -hmm. uh, very successful recently in, in, in uh, the Bordelais. 
what do you, do you think this is a good thing or, or you mean or, exporting the the gra the, the uh, vines the, themselves the, the actual vines yes planting them i don't think they're going to plant it to plant them in france no. maybe for uh, like a uh, dark newport we yes, have all right, all right, is on yes. toriga yes. and i heard uh, i know that in south africa some guys have planted uh, maybe in countries where they don't have native varieties okay and uh, yes yes but I would uh, expect that Torigo would stay a Portuguese. So we won't, we won't see Torigo Nacional in the south of England or...? Uh, I know that uh, they also uh, tried Torigo Nacional. But I would say Torigo Nacional, at least from what we know, uh, behaves uh, best in, in warm and, and has yes. the capacity. That's the good thing of the Torigo Nacional. The, the, it has the, the capacity the, the, the to survive. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. In very... Uh, different uh, environments in terms of uh, yes. lack of water and in terms of uh, temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and la lack of water this brings us on to the subject of climate change, of course. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that the climate change is impacting the Douro specifically, or does the Douro have? Uh, through perhaps its great varieties, the, the, the capacity to almost ignore uh, no, climate no, no, change. No, 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 not at all. No, because when when this uh, <coughs> okay, you can speak about the climate change in terms of uh, the slow uh, warming of uh, uh, the atmosphere of the oceans of the the melting of the but that is i mean it's not so slow in terms of uh, the, the 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 history of the land but uh, you don't notice every day no. but then there are the very strong uh things that happen like uh, heat waves yes, that yes. can burn any right. kind of grape variety right or the hail storms in yes, the summer yes, that can yes. destroy or um, the lack of rain yes or the warmer uh, winters and and, and um, springs that uh, yes. that anticipate the beginning of the, the harvest. Yep. So that those are phenomena that can destroy your production in one year. Yes, 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 sure. And that is we've been noticing that without without any doubt. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we're now beginning to return to a kind of normal life after lockdown due to COVID. Do you have any particular projects for the rest of the year? Or um, how do you see this, this post-lockdown phase? Mm -hmm. Okay, in terms of uh, short, short uh, measures, sh yes, short, uh, short term. term things that we've done, we've tried to take advantage of the, of the off-trade uh, growth and um, making better deals with our off-trade partners um, and we tried to uh, con uh, or to have a, a better a better uh, visibility of our tourism uh, infrastructure because we expect that all Portuguese will stay in Portugal and will come more to the to the inland to the yes to the, yes yes uh, in medium term or long term I think it's still too early right right to yeah to understand if we need to do mm. any mm. but we still believe well, in in uh, in the the, the strength of the tourism yes, and we have plans yes. to increase a little bit our infrastructure that's, that's great to that's do great. it yeah in the short term yes well in the meantime any portuguese person who's able to spend their their holiday in the doro this year i think they're very fortunate thank you Jaribo, thank you so much for this very stimulating and enjoyable thank conversation. you so much james thank you for, for wel welcoming us